for today. I received a request to make a, uh, a supplementary video to kind of and to go in a little bit more detail about the uh, networking setup. Um, I will do my best to do, give you as much information as I can. Um, the issue is, is there's a lot of different ways to set up your network. So even if I show you exactly how mine's set up, yours may vary. Uh, but I can show you what I have and uh, just touch on a couple more things and hopefully it will it will uh, clear up some uh, confusion and perhaps you can get this installed. So uh, what, I've, what I've done here is I've gone ahead and opened the terminal. This is on my host machine, by the way. I'm not in the virtual box anymore. So I'm going to show you what the Wi-Fi looks like, too. I know we talked about that during the installation, and I'll show you what that file looks like. Anyway, I went ahead and sudo the root, and I have also changed directories into the etc net ctl, which is net control is what it is short for. And if we do an ls minus ls on it, as you can see, it's it's all root. You can't get in here as a regular user. And if you look down here at the bottom right here, this very bottom file, this file here was created by the Wi-Fi dash menu script when I ran it uh, during the during the process it asks you what do you want to name the file this is the prompt this is the screen you see right before you enter your password and what I did is is I, I hate remembering all these big old long things so what I did is I just named it Wi-Fi and I'm gonna nano that file so you can see what's in it again this is auto populated by Wi-Fi menu and this is what it is. It's got a description to it. This is the my wireless interface, uh, my wireless adapter. The connection type is wireless. I'm using the WPA. This is the SSID of my um, access point. I get my IP address through DHCP, and this is a hashed or encrypted version of my password however you wish to say that it's it's not plain text and again as the description says it's automatically generated by Wi-Fi menu so I didn't have to do anything but pick a name and enter the password it automatically copied it to this directory and again that is etc slash net control alright the Wi-Fi menu also automatically starts your networking session by that, what I mean is it contacts the, the AP, it does its negotiation, it gives it the password, it collects all the information from it, being the IP address, the DNS information, all of that is automatically done through a service called DHCP, which is short for Dynamic Host Control Protocol. And if you don't have to put in your information or your if you don't have to program your interface with an IP address, a gateway, and all that stuff manually, and you get that stuff from like your router or you get that stuff from, you know, it's automatically assigned to you, then it is through DHCP. If you are given this information, the IP address and such, uh, directly by someone else, like say an administrator, um, that is who you would need to contact if the information that you received does not work. If you are the administrator and you chose to do uh, a static setup or you're in a static setup, let's say your your internet service provider give you a static IP address and you're supposed to put it in statically, uh, you need to contact them if you are having any kind of issues with getting it to work. Um, because again, there's so like I said, there are so many different types of setups. I can't sit here and make a video on every single kind. So uh, I'm just generally going through what uh, happens with DHCP, which is the most common type out there. There's, a, there's an excellent chance that you have DHCP and you're not running the static. Um, but anyway, that's what the Wi-Fi looks like. Um, I'm going to copy the examples that Ethernet file that I showed in the video where I had the little typo boo-boo and it. it it did seem kind of confusing even to me as I was doing it. And um, due to some construction, constructive criticism, it was suggested that I edited that part out. And uh, that's absolutely right. I should have. Um, 
and I apologize for that. But anyway, inside this examples folder, I'm going to hit tab a couple times here so it will automatically list what's going on. There's an Ethernet custom, there's an Ethernet DHCP, and there's an Ethernet static. So if you have a static setup, you would want to use the static example. Uh, if you want to create your own custom uh, setup and you want to do everything, you know, however you want to do it in a customized fashion, that is beyond the scope of this video. Uh, what I'm going to focus on is the Ethernet DHCP. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that file and I'm going to place it right here. That's what the dot means. Now when I do an ls-la or ls-ls, -ls, um, it creates another file in here, which is this top one, which is the one we just copied over. All right. So if we nano that one it brings up this information right here and this is actually fairly straightforward um, all you'd end up having to do is end up putting your your interface address right here where it says uh, interface and I'll show you how to get your interface um, how to find out what the interface is um, it, it for a while they used to use easily guessed names like ETH0 and with the with um, if config on its way out, it's being uh, deprecated with the replacement, which is IP. Uh, it goes back to something that's really kind of um, encrypted. You don't really have to change anything else in this file. Just change the interface. Now I'm going to clear this window out and should be able to do I'm I may have to do a little Googling here or whatever in just a second, but I'll, I'll get to this. It's IP link, and when you hit IP link, it lists all of the interfaces that are currently uh, available. LO is localhost. That's your local loop, also known as 127.0.0.1 is its, ad is its IP address. And it's a loopback address that is used by the system. My interface number two here, let me see if I can blow this up just a little bit. I like really tiny fonts, so let me, there we go. All right, so there's your local loop. This number two, this ENP7S0, is my wired ethernet adapter. It's like my RJ45 that I just plug a, a networking cable into. That's the name on the interface. This WLP1S0 is my wireless. And that is the interface. Let me uh, get out of here. Oh, I'm not even in anything. Um, let me go back and look in wireless, or the Wi-Fi one. i show it to you right here is the interface. Again, this is the script is automatically generated by the Wi-Fi menu command. And in fact, I can walk through that and show you you know how to do that too um, but that's where that interface goes so if you are on a wired internet connection you'll use like this link right here EMP7S0 it'll look something very similar to that and what you'll do is you'll place that in this fold this file right here and you can rename this anything you want in fact let's go ahead and do that okay we're gonna move MV command uh, if you're not familiar with uh, uh, if you're not familiar with basic commands, I have a video series on the command line, and move is one of those commands that I, I discuss. Um, please watch it if, if you uh, feel the need to do that. So anyway, I'm going to move this command to, I like to refer back to the old way of doing things, which is ETH0. So I'm going to just move it. Now when I do my LS minus LA, I have this one here. I know this is going to be for my Ethernet. And I know this one here is going to be for my Wi-Fi. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this here. Copy. And then I'm going to nano ETH0. And I'm going to go ahead and replace this here now. Just like that. And I'm going to hit Control X and then Y to save. I'm going to file, you know, right back out to the, where it was at. Okay. And now that file is set up. All I have to do is to type in ETCTL start and then the interface you want to start. 
or this is actually the script, or they call it the profile. And you can do this from any directory. You don't have to be in this directory. You can be in the root directory because net control knows what its home directory is and that's where it's going to look for this script. Okay. I'm not going to hit enter because then I, I don't know what kind of effect that's going to have on my already established internet connection. But that's what you do is you type out net control, start, and then that file right there and hit enter. And when you're done with that, what you want to do is type ping dash C, which C stands for count. We're going to hit them with three pings and we're going to google.com. And no, they don't mind. If they if if you ping an address and you get a result back, they don't care if you ping them. If they had problems with that, they would get into like their border routers or whatever and they would disable it to where you can't send them IC, ICMP requests. All right, anyway, so I'm on the internet because I can ping. All right, then you would type NETCTL space enable and then that interface that you want to enable. And now what this will do is it will automatically start your networking every time you reboot your computer so you don't have to get into a command line and start it every single time. This will do it automatically. It adds it, it, adds it to the systemd uh, st startup services. Um, again, I'm not going to hit enter because I already have an entry in there uh, for my... Wi-Fi. And all it does is it creates a couple of symbolic links and, and that kind of thing there. So there's nothing special to look at on the screen. And it doesn't do anything else. You know, as far as you as a user can tell by entering the command, it just creates a couple symbolic links and it goes back to the to your command prompt. Um, I hope that kind of frees things up a little bit and explains it a little bit better. Um, I do apologize again for any confusion in any of the videos. So with this Wi-Fi menu, it's WIFI dash menu dash O. And when you hit this, it's going to scan for the networks. And it's already going to tell it's going to come up with this. See, I'm already connected. But if I wasn't connected, it would list all the available uh all the available um, um APs. And then I would just toggle up and down with my open down arrow key and choose my AP. That way you don't end up like on your neighbor's AP or whatever whatever your situation is. You choose the, the appropriate access point and then hit enter. With me, I'm going to hit cancel because, again, I don't want to mess anything up that's already established. Okay? And as you go through that prompt, it only asks you like two questions. What do you want to name the profile, which we already talked about? That's what I named it, Wi-Fi. And then it asks you for the password. And then it the screen goes blank for just a couple seconds. And then when it comes back to the command prompt, you're connected. As soon as it does that, then you can go ahead and issue your ping again, or issue your ping. And as soon as you see these lines here coming back, you know, 64 bytes from, um, you know, once these lines right here come back, you know you're connected to the internet. If it comes back and it says ping google.com and it has an IP address in there, you can tell you're connected to the internet because it has to resolve this name I'm not going to get into name resolution very much either. But it has to resolve this name to an IP address, which is this one right here. And it works for IPv4 and for IPv6. This is an IPv4 address. And it also worked for the, the newer next version, uh, but it's ping 6.c3. And it's ipv6.google.com. And you can tell if your IPv6 is working too, which of course mine is, as you can tell. But anyway, uh, I hope that clarifies things. And uh, once again, I do apologize, and I'll do a better job at editing my videos. Um, anyway, I will see you guys in the next series. Uh, I haven't exactly chosen what it's going to be on. Um, it's probably going to be another uh, installation how-to like this one here, but I may pick something like uh, uh, Fedora. And uh, that's going to be kind of interesting uh, if I do choose that because there is no net install CD. So basically what we would probably end up having to do is start from a bare bones uh, server installation and then go from there. But uh, don't, don't write that in stone either because I may or may not do that. Um, but it is something interesting and, and 
I may look at it. 